words of Holy Scripture from the Acts of the Apostles, Act 2, verse 17, will be fulfilled today in our church as some of our young people are going to receive the sacrament of confirmation. Through this sacrament, they will be filled with the gifts, fruits, and charisms of the Holy Spirit. They will receive an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Through confirmation, they are confirmed of the baptismal graces, strengthened in their faith to be soldiers of Christ, to defend, protect, and expand God's kingdom through their authentic Christian belief. It also reminds each one of us of our Christian duty. We extend a hearty welcome to our Archbishop Thomas de Souza, our shepherd, who has come to celebrate the Eucharist and administer the sacrament of confirmation. A hearty welcome to you, Your Grace. We also welcome the young people who will receive the sacrament of confirmation, along with their families, friends and visitors, who have come to share in this special day on their journey of faith. Our parish rejoices as they are confirmed in the faith of their baptism, the faith of this community, the faith of the church. With unexpected faith and jubilant joy, let us begin the Eucharistic celebration while the choir leads us in the singing.
Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit pray.
be within us. We make of us a perfect temple of His glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The word of God, the responsorial psalm shall be sung. Set to him. 
Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he says, also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of the Melchizedek. The word of God. Please stand for the gospel affirmation. become children of God. Francis, Neda Veronica Atu, 
Adam, Alistair, Amelia, Eli, Gabriella, Francis, Amanda, Celia, Lauren, Vivian, Judith, Matthias, Shannon, Isabel, Norton, Arunima, Veronica, Haku, Sarah, Ann, Cooper, Shonak, Bangabhadrai. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, inaugurated for the entire church a very significant that I believe is going to transform the church an ecclesial event and that is called the Synod of Bishops. The synod simply means journeying together, walking together and in that coming together of bishops and representatives about 300 of them will be there in October 2023 to discuss about the church. The Holy Father has chosen a theme this year and the theme is for a synodal church means a church that is journeying together. The word together is important, not in isolation but together. These days of course we are rather hesitant to go together because of the pandemic norms that are there to be followed. But the church is formed by, by people coming together. And that's what we read in the Acts of the Apostles. All of them were gathered together, the apostles in the upper room. There were people outside all gathered together. And then the Holy Spirit descended and He gave birth to the church that day. So when the Holy Spirit descended at the time of Pentecost, that was the birthday of the church. When the apostles receiving the power came out to claim the great deeds that God had done in history, and very especially in and through Jesus Christ, His life, His death and resurrection. And they were proclaiming that. We are witnesses, they said. We have seen this. Ordinary men, fishermen, most of them, and yet proclaiming the mighty deeds of God so powerfully because of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Father, when he inaugurated the event of the 10th of this month, he wants the entire church to be involved in this preparation for two years. A synodal church. How can we have a synodal church? How can we all walk together, journey together here on earth? And of course, our destiny is in heaven. How can we go there as a people together? With total compassion, understanding, love, support, cooperation, joy. How can we become such a wonderful people? That is the Holy Father's wish. And from the 17th of this month, on which day I inaugurated in our cathedral, the Zayosan preparation for the same synod the different phases of preparation. The Austin phase from the 17th of October this year, the last Sunday, till April 2022. During which we are asked in our parishes, in our small Christian communities, among the youth, among our elderly people, even old people, sick people, even among those who are disinterested we must say that painfully, there are many disinterested in the church, the Catholics, but are disinterested in practicing it for some reason or other. We don't judge them, and yet it's a fact, even to reach out to them, reach out to those who are indifferent to the church, reach out to those who are poor, those who are sick, and ask them as a consultation. What type of church would you like to have? What has been your story of your Christian journey so far? Why is it that you are indifferent? Or why are you so joyful and active in the church? What makes you so? How can all of us together in a parish or our different action groups and therefore the entire parish, finally the entire archdiocese, 
and every diocese in India and in the world, how can we be a journey together church? For this, we have a lot of uh, training for those contact persons and the others who help you to do this. So I also ask this parish of Balankani, the active parish, each one of you get involved in this, giving your opinion, at the same time listening to others, to their stories, and someone jotting down those insights, make a short report after everything is over, all those small reports collected together, collated, and then sent to the diocese. We have for the Michael Bishops and for the Franklin Menezes as a contact person. They have a team, they are the team representing various sectors of our people. We have priests, we have our religious sisters, we have young people, we have elderly people, we have men, women, and students. All these are there. So, how together in the team, they will collate all it together and then uh, sent to the CCBI Center of Bishops who will again collate all the reports of all the dioceses in India for 130 Latin Rite dioceses. They will send it to Rome and then they will prepare a document. That document will come back and it will discuss at a higher level, at the continental level for us in Asia. So all the bishop conferences of Asia will discuss that. That will be from April, uh, from uh, uh, September 22 to April 23, and then October 23, the synod of bishops will take place with a theme for a synod of church, communion, participation, and mission. The whole uh, sacrament of confirmation, and our service will light the canons of those to be confirmed from the pastoral canon. We shall kindly switch off the bands and this is the ones in front. I hear our Bishop Thomas and Susan. The candidates here from the church Seek to receive the sacrament of confirmation, the seed of the Holy Spirit. We desire, we desire to be confirmed with the faith, to receive in a very special way the Spirit of Jesus and all the gifts He will give us. We want to be a good sister and speak about Jesus and His love to all who believe. By receiving the Spirit, we want to be more like Him. This, the Apostles who had received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, in fulfillment of the Lord's promise, had power to complete the work of baptism by the giving of the Holy Spirit as to read the Acts of the Apostles. When St. Paul had laid his hands on certain people who had been baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. The bishops, as successors of the apostles, possessed the same power and either in their own right or through priests, lawfully appointed to fulfill this ministry, they confer the Holy Spirit on those who have already been born again in baptism. Even if today the coming of the Holy Spirit is no longer widely made manifest by the gift of tongues, we know by faith that the Spirit through whom the love of God has been poured into our hearts and through whom we are gathered in unity of faith and diversity of callings is received by us and is working invisibly to make the church holy and one. Dearly beloved, the gift of the Holy Spirit which you are about to receive will be a spiritual seal by which you will be conformed to Christ and will be made more fully members of His Church. For Christ Himself, anointed by the Holy Spirit in the baptism we received from John, was sent forth for the work of His ministry to pour out on the earth the fire of the same Spirit. Therefore, you who are already baptized will now receive the power of His Spirit 
and his sign with his cross on your foreheads. And so, you must always bear witness to his passion and resurrection before the world, so that your manner of life, as the apostle says, may in every place be a pleasing fragrance of Christ. His mystical body, which is the church, the people of God, receives from him diverse graces, which the same Holy Spirit distributes to individuals for the building up of that body in unity and love. Be living members of this church, therefore, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, seek to serve all people like Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. And now, before you receive the Spirit, call to mind the faith which you profess in baptism, or which your parents and godparents profess with the church. So, I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as it was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the entire church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Sisters, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Let us pray for these brothers and sisters for a minute in silence. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Aiden, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
fulfilled the sacrament of confirmation with his power and with his gifts. We will truly be witnesses to Jesus' love, to his work, his life, death and resurrection. And fill this parish with the spirit of journeying together in communion, in participation and mission. That all together we journey forward to the power of the Spirit, reach our destination in heaven, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought in for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Through him 
anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all triumphs to overcome, they may gladden you in church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. intention of the month is to pray that every baptized person may be engaged in evangelization available to the mission by being witnesses of a life that has flavor of the gospel. Come forward and assist the church with your help. We can now have the prayer to save children. To find this place. Okay, repeat after me please. Hail Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted His only Son, in you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ became man, Blessed Joseph you are still, Show yourself a father, show yourself a father, and guide us in the path of life. And guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage. And defend us from every evil. Amen. And defend us from every evil. Amen. Now I. Uh,
Spirit of Truth would abide in His Church, lest you and confirm you with Christ's power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, lest you and lead you blameless and gather as one in the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thank you.